So, hello, Brad. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. How about yourself? I'm pretty darn good myself. It's, uh, it's exciting to have you live. I have to say that I'm watching you almost every morning, and I tell everybody to watch you almost every yeah. morning. So, um, I, this interview is basically done so that more people get into uh, tapping, um, also to, to help people maybe have better lives, improve whatever aspect of their life they want to improve, enlighten as many people as possible. Uh, this interview will also be translated in French so that we can reach as many people as possible. And uh, when I learn Spanish, it'll be Spanish. <laughs> so um, to start, as I'm going to ask everyone else, I would like uh, to perhaps you introduce yourself for people that don't know who you are yet and uh, maybe start with that. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Brad Yates. <laughs> <laughs> and I tap on my face for a living. <laughs> uh, started out years ago, I, I used to be an actor. I was a struggling actor in Hollywood. And when I had a, a young family, I started out starting to have kids, I thought, you know, I should probably have a backup career. So I trained to become a hypnotherapist and was really enjoying that. And when my second child was on the way, I thought, you know what, I'm enjoying doing hypnotherapy more than I am trying to make a living as an actor. So I decided to do that full time. I uh, moved from Los Angeles up to Northern California. And that's when I heard about this tapping thing. And I fell in love with it. And so little by little, started to introduce a little bit of the tapping into my hypnotherapy sessions until it started to shift and became tapping sessions with a little bit of hypnotherapy at the end. What it is basically and how does it help? What causes it to have such a great effect? Yeah, good question because some people are probably right now saying, what do you mean you tap on your face for a living? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it, I know it looks a little strange, it's a little different, and, and I know I can say to people, hey, if I could teach you a simple technique that would help you reduce stress like nothing else, it would help you have better health, better relationships, a better career, make more money. Would you be interested? And people would be like, oh, yeah. Okay, so just tap on your face. Uh, you know what? We're fine. Thanks. <laughs> I'll pass. It's so, true. It is. so, I know it looks a little different, but, but around uh, 1980, a gentleman named Roger Callahan, a psychologist, was working with a woman with a lifelong water phobia. And at the time, he was just expanding his interests and had learned a little bit about acupressure. Yeah. Acupressure, acupuncture, for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they've said there's this flow of energy through the body along pathways called meridians. So when this energy is flowing naturally, we experience our natural state of health and well-being. When this energy gets stuck or disturbed in some way, then we don't feel so good, uh, either emotionally or physically. So an acupuncturist would stick needles in key points around the body and face to stimulate that natural flow of energy, get you feeling better again, clear out whatever the disturbance is. So Dr. Callahan uh, was working with this woman and she said one of the symptoms of her water phobia was a knot in her stomach. And he said, okay, let's see, I've learned that the end point for the stomach meridian is right here under the eye. Let's see what happens if we tap under your eye for a moment. And after a moment she said, it's gone. He said, what's gone? She said, the fear. And starts running towards the swimming pool. And he starts running after her, saying, wait, stop. She said, no, it's okay. I, I, I know I don't know how to swim. I'm not going to jump in. But she was able to splash water in her face, which before she couldn't do. And no reaction. No negative disturbance. So Dr. Callahan thought, hmm, that's very interesting. <laughs> and he starts trying this with different clients. And within a year, he put himself out of business because all of his patients who had been coming to him on a weekly basis were now symptom-free. So, uh, so he uh, called this new technique that he was using thought field therapy, or the Callahan technique, and started teaching it. And one of his first uh, students was a gentleman named Gary Craig, and Gary had 
been as an engineering student at Stanford, and so thinking like an engineer, he started to take Dr. Callahan's method, which involved different algorithms tapping different points in different sequences, depending on what the issue is. And Gary thought, okay, what if we just tap these eight points in a row? No matter what the issue is, we just tap all the points in a row. And he found that he got the same great results without having to figure out, okay, which points to tap. And he called uh, this streamlined version emotional freedom technique, or EFT. And now a lot of people call it either EFT or just tapping. So basically, we tap with our fingertips on these meridian points to clear out the disturbance. And the main thing it, it, that shows up is that it clears out stress. You know, we have uh, a recent research study that was done showing that this tapping process reduced cortisol levels by an average of 24 percent. Cortisol is the stress hormone that gets released, you know, when we get into fight or flight. And when it gets stuck in the body, it has a number of negative side effects. So tapping clears that out. So we have this scientific evidence showing that tapping is one of the most effective and quickest ways of reducing stress. Wow, that's fabulous. Because so. uh, on the other hand, you see, uh, I'm studying like how the brain functions when you want to learn faster, or I, like I'm trying to um, make a link between people that are more spiritual and people that are more scientific oriented to basically uh, um, show them how they can improve their life, no matter how their perspective is, that it's basically the same thing. And one of, them, one of the aspects that is more scientific is how we can do that by using a reprogramming of the brain or how, how brain waves work, how perception works, etc. And evidently when you reduce, it's proven fact now that when you reduce stress and you increase the level of happiness, your brain uh, learns faster and is able to even, the neuroplasticity of the brain is able to help you shift even your, 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 the way the brain functions just because of some hormonal changes. So if tapping can reduce stress by that much, that's amazing. Because on top, and if we look at the spiritual aspect, if we want, of self-development, like the law of attraction, we know that to attract happiness or well-being, we need to be in a state of well-being. So if tapping can reduce that level of stress, then it's phenomenal on, on every level. I'm, I'm quite impressed. Because I, you see, and I understand what you're saying, it's true, people are going to be okay with uh, acupuncture, they're going to be okay with changing their lives, but then you introduce something new as tapping, and it's like, I'm, I'm going to look uh, foolish, or it doesn't work, or what is this thing, it's impossible, it's the impossibility aspect. Um, so it, do you have like stories of, of people that have come back to you with incredible stories of things that have happened to them? I mean, there's a whole, whole range of some echo. Yes. I think it's gone now. Is it gone? Uh, let me see if I turn that down. Okay. Oh, much better. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole range of, of things. I, I want to jump on one of the points you said there uh, that when people look at it and go, oh, it's impossible, I don't want to do this, you know. That's one of the ways we keep ourselves in our comfort zone. Yeah. See, every, every, I would say that self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. There's a part of us that believes that where I'm at, the level of success that I have, the level of health that I have, all that stuff, is where I feel safest, based on programming from the past. So anything that comes along and says, hey, I'm going to open the door and let you out of your comfort zone, part of it says, whoa, no. So it's very easy for people to then look at something like this and say, oh, that can't work, that's stupid, that's this. And part of us is going, Whew. boy, now I won't use it and I won't step out of my comfort zone. I totally agree. And so much I agree because I, I teach people in my coaching sessions that there's the two things people are most afraid of is extreme failure and extreme success. Because those are things we absolutely have no clue how they function. And, and what I uh, teach people actually a lot it, for, for attracting the best and changing their lives is to create a new comfort zone. Because I tell people a lot that 
if your comfort zone is lack, if your comfort zone is running after money or running after health or running after something, well, that's your comfort zone and it's going to be very difficult to achieve it because you don't know what your state of being is once you achieve that point. So that's so scary. The achievement point is so scary that you feel comfortable running after and never achieving. So I, I teach people to actually stay like 15, 20, 30 minutes every day in a state of achievement of whatever they want, where they actually release that stress or that anxiety. Because I tell people, and I live through that, I think a lot of people do, that if you actually think, okay, I have it all, let's say I have it all, and there's this sudden fear that emerges of, oh my God, what am I going to do now? I have it all. There's nothing to do. And that's scary. You know, yeah. when, uh, whereas we should be saying, great, I had never have anything to do. Things just happen to me all the time beautifully. So I agree with you. And, and uh, if tapping can release that, that's, that's so powerful because I believe, as you say, this is such a big, I think it's one of the main roadblocks of success to people is, is changing their, um, their comfort zone into having the new one that's the, the one of success which is the one we should always be in because then everything occurs easily, correct? Yeah, you could say that we are 100% successful 100% of the time. It's just a question of what we're being successful at, you know? And, and most of us are much more comfortable being successful at chasing than having. <laughs> you know, I know how to chase. I know how to, you know, have it always just out of reach. I'm really good at that. So I think I'd rather keep doing that than the having part because that one I'm not so familiar with. That's a little uh, uncomfortable. So we're very successful. It's like a, we're always motivated. People will say, oh, I need to be motivated. No, you're already motivated. You just need to be more motivated for this than for that. More motivated to exercise than to stay in bed. You know, it's not. Gee, if I had some motivation, I'd get up and out, out of bed and exercise now. You're, very, you're just more motivated to stay in bed than you are to exercise. Yeah, and so we want to look at, you know, motivation. Is, a motive is a reason. Motivation just means that we have reasons. So it's when our reasons for staying in bed outweigh our reasons for, uh, for exercising. And it's about that, like, like you said, that chasing and having. I have more reasons to keep myself in a place that I understand, that's familiar, that's comfortable, then I do have reasons to, to be in a place where I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. I don't know, you know, if I had all that money, she I'd have to make investments, and I'd have to trust people, and I'd have to pay taxes on it, and, you know, and part of the brain is going, I can't deal with that, you know, but chasing it, and everybody I know is chasing it, so I'm in with everybody else, you know, I'm that familiar. So we're we're very motivated to be in a place that's comfortable, in a place that's familiar, in a place that feels safe. True. So, but that comes up as stress. Yeah. You know that that thought. That's why, you know, it's, it's great what you say about having your your clients uh, imagine the having. So that's that's what I tell you. Is imagine the having. Now check in with yourself and see how good you feel, and if there's any stress there, and if there's any stress, like oh, I have to pay taxes on that. Great. Even though I don't have to pay taxes on that, and then we start doing the tapping to clear the stress, then you go back into that place of imagine having, and it's like uh, imagining having, and it's like, oh yeah, I can do this. This feels good. <laughs> I totally agree, and it's and I use like I do your tapping. I I need to say uh, now lately on one that is uh, you do um, a session on miracles. So yeah. I started doing that because I, I, I you know, I, I'm, I think, why not have more of them? And, uh, <laughs> you know, and I, I realized that it's true that we call, there's some things we call miracles just because our mind cannot find the ways, the path to get there. But the path exists, like all past exists. Everybody has done it, has done something sim similar. So all past exists, we call miracles things that we cannot understand how to get there. And oh my God, so it's such a big thing, I can't, you know, I can't figure it out. Um, so I, I, I use that a lot and, I, and other ones as well. And I, I tell people to, but it's true that I think the, the biggest block 
people have is to try it by thinking, you know, oh, I'm going to spend 15 minutes there and it's not going to give results. When I tell them, well, you know, you're sp spending 15 minutes anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's like, like saying, okay, okay, you know what, I want to have a six pack on my abs. And, you know, I go and I do five sit ups and I go, and it's not quite there. No, sit ups don't work. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's going to take more than five sit-ups, and it's going to take a lot of time. Now, with EFT, uh, you know, especially when people hear the the foundation story, and you know, Mary losing her fear of water in a matter of moments, so people then think, well, so tapping has to happen. The, the this miracle has to happen in a matter of minutes, or tapping doesn't work. No, we we call those one minute wonders. And they happen sometimes. You know, I've experienced them with, uh, with with people who've had past tra traumatic events. You know, something that's happened to them in their childhood or 20 years ago or whatever it is that they still think about on an almost daily basis. It still upsets them when they think about it. They feel physically ill when they think about it. And sometimes we can, we can be tapping just for a matter of minutes, and then they go, oh. Wow, that's kind of like watching it on a movie now. It's it's like it didn't happen to me; it happened to someone else. No physical symptom, no stress, and and very often that's lasting. That that memory, that event, never bothers them again. Wow, it's a, sometimes isn't it like um, when you put something in the light, like pure light of of consciousness, it just it the the association of feelings or, or the connection we made uh, of a significance we gave it just disappears because that's just related emotions that not need not be once it's to totally put in light. Right. Right. Basically, because, with total yeah. honesty, basically, with total no fear and honesty, correct? Right. Because it's, it's our beliefs about what happened that bother us. It's very often not what happened, because what happened heals. You know, if you, if you, uh, you know, get a cut someplace, it's going to heal. And, you know, in a matter of maybe weeks, you won't even see, there may not even be a scar. You may not even see it. But if we have, uh, but if we, if we cut ourselves because we're doing something stupid, then we've got an emotional thing, and that's going to stick there. So the, the wounds that are physical tend to heal, but the pain... The pain that sticks is the one that has the story. So yeah, as, as you said, if you put it under that pure light, and you can see oh, what happened just happened. The rest of it is just my story about it. It's just the, the beliefs that I have about it. You know, if somebody was mean to me, you know, if, if my friend takes my toy away, you know, I might get over that. But if I had this belief that he's telling, my, my friend is saying that I don't deserve to have that toy, I'm not good enough, he's not my friend anymore, he doesn't like me, and then I start to have self-esteem issues about that, and then it's all going on in my head. <laughs> he, I have no idea what he's thinking, but this is all going on in my head. That's the stuff that I carry with me. So as you say, yeah, with the tapping, we're allowing ourselves to clear the stress out, put it under that light and go, oh yeah, it just happened. It doesn't mean anything about me. And then we can let it go, and we're, and we're free. And the problem is that we have these things that happened in our childhood, and we make these decisions about ourselves, and then we go and we make all these decisions throughout life based on that. Yeah. You know, we where we're at right now is the sum total of all the choices that we've made, and we've made those choices at an emotional level. So as we tap and we give ourselves this emotional freedom, we have the freedom to make better choices. Not, not, uh, not depending on past, um, past opinions because evidently our perception at that time was completely different and based on totally different experience than what we're experiencing today on top of it. So it's not even, the past is not real, a real reality, it's just the reality of how we perceived it with the knowledge we had in the past. Absolutely. What I like, one of the aspects I love about your tapping is the aspect of self-love. I believe that uh, whether it's the law of attraction or even in the brain level of, uh, of how we react, we often um, self-sabotage. I, I believe that there's three pillars of success, and one of the major pillars is self-esteem. believe there's time management, goal setting, and self-esteem. And if there's one of them that 
is lacking, you can't go very far. And the self-esteem one is what people refuse to accept the most, like everybody's okay, but it's the one that actually self-sabotage them the most because they feel they're not good enough. And everything they do is basically somehow to prove that they're good enough somewhere that they can be loved. And what I love about your tapping is that it always brings back and I accept myself. I have this and I still love and accept myself. And I find this is such a powerful uh, wording. I believe words are so powerful, correct? So this is so powerful for people to accept themselves even, even before even wanting to change anything. That's just so that people love themselves no matter what they have within them, so that they heal that guilt, heal the past, heal whatever has occurred or whatever their perception was, whatever they are done and what their bad choices were, bad, not meaning not good, just different choices they've made that led them where they are now and just I love that about your tapping is because you bring that acceptance and that love and and in my coaching self-love is one of the major components because if you don't deserve if you never think you deserve what you want there's never any chance you're gonna access it you're always gonna put it further away because you're not just not good enough for it so I like that a lot about it and I have a question because I watched uh, other other tapping uh, on uh, just to compare lately and um, did you come up with your own how does it work do you come up with your own wording do you come up with your your own sequences do you are you inspired how does it work in the tapping world yeah that, that last one uh, I always feel like I don't really come up with the ideas come to me you know people will give me suggestions but for the most part most of the almost 400 videos I have right now uh, just an idea will come to me of here's something that I think will help people, myself included. It's, you know, I, I, quite a few of them are, were just, you know, I'll be going through my day and something will uh, come up and it's like, oh, this would be a good tapping round. <laughs> and so I'll have the concept for it. And I might have a couple of ideas, but for the most part, once I start tapping, I'm just getting myself out of the way and the words come through me. And you know, I'll, I compare it to channeling, and I'm always careful of using that word channeling because we, we think of like Abraham Hicks and, you know, somebody having some entity or group of entities speaking through them, and I'm not aware of anything like that. Uh, it's just that, you know, sometimes things will come through me and I go, wow, that was brilliant. I wish I'd thought of it. <laughs> just, and, and just phrases that'll come out, I'll come up with analogies. And I'll say, well, it's kind of like this, and we tap it along. And the person will say, how did you know? That actually happened to me. I, you know, there's a connection that happens when we're working together. You know, everything's energy. We're all connected. So I just sort of trust the process and that the words are going to come out that need to come out. And then that's, that's why sometimes my tapping rounds tend to be longer than a lot of other people's because I, I just keep going with as the ideas come to me. And, you know, sometimes I'll try to be wrapping it up. It's like, oh, we've been going for a long time. Like, these people often ask me, can you make five-minute videos? Because I don't always have time for a longer video. And I say, I try. I have a timer going all the time. And I'm always shooting for five minutes. Or, and, you know, I'll get to around there. But the ideas are coming. It's like, oh, you've got to say this. And now you've got to cover this. And, you, oh, and you've got to address this now. Until finally it's like, okay, now you can wrap it up. <laughs> You know, and in the videos, it's the, those, that's usually around eight to ten minutes. Sometimes when I'm doing a session or uh, or I'm doing a teleseminar or something like that, I've had rounds that can go for 20, 30, 40 minutes just because, especially if I'm working with someone one-on-one -on -one and I'm tuned into the person and there's just ideas and it's like, oh, I think this, I, I think this person needs me to address this and I need to cover this aspect and just trying to look at all the different aspects of the issue that we might want to bring up and then clear out. So yes, I wanted to talk about that. So what are like, it's like somebody asked me once, uh, who do you think should be coached? And I, as a coach, it was difficult not to, to 
let my ego on the side. But the truth is, I really wanted to say, well, everybody needs a coach, you know? So I know if I ask you, you're going to say, well, everybody should <laughs> do <laughs> tapping sessions with me. But I, I would like to know, so if someone wants to get, you know, a session with you, what, how does it work? How long do they have to prepare? What do they need to prepare to get in touch with you, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I have on my website just a, a place you can click to find out about working with me in sessions. Uh, you know, I do have an intake form that I ask people to fill out just so that it, it just helps them focus on what precisely is going on in there. There are uh, questions about some of, about past events. And I would say this is this is just gathering the usual suspects. You know, it's like there's been a crime committed. Let's just gather all the usual suspects and have them line up so that we know who to look at. It's like okay, it's this one or it's this one, okay. and it just gets us focused so that when we actually are together, we uh, don't have to spend a lot of time uh, looking at all that. Uh, and I generally, you know, I mean. Sometimes I work with someone for one session because, you know, they just have one thing that it's like, oh, I just need to have a, you know, some clearing on this. Generally, it's over a, a number of sessions so we can keep building it. You know, with tapping, it's like peeling the layers of an onion. And so we want to uh, clear that so I can be working with someone over time. And just in, things come up in the fourth, fifth, sixth session that they may not have, have remembered. Or it's something that it's like, wow, why didn't we work on this in the first session? It's like we weren't ready in the first session to talk about that. You know, there was all these walls. It was that that stuff was, you know, far back in the vault, and we need to, you know, clear through a number of different doors to to get there. So, you know, there's a lot of. I mean, I recommend tapping on a daily basis, just because it's, you know, we have basic body hygiene. You know, we brush our teeth whether we need it or not. We take a shower whether we need it or not. Because we know that if we don't, pretty soon people are going to start to be looking at us going, hey, how you doing? <laughs> um, walking away from us. So bef before we get to that point, we have a daily practice of hygiene. It's the same with stress. I look at this as energy hygiene. You know, we want to be clearing that stuff out because we don't think about stress. We just let it build up to the point where, you know, it would be like not taking a shower till the point that people are holding their nose around us. With the stress, we let it build up to the point that someone says, hey, how's it going? You're going, shut up! <laughs> where did that come from? Well, it's all the stress that's built up over the week or month or years, and it just gets to that point, and just one word can really set us off. So we want to be clearing that stuff out on a daily basis. And then there's some stuff that, yeah, you want to work with a professional and, you know, get that coaching because, you know, it's like we were saying at the beginning about the self-sabotage being um, self, misguided self-love. There's that part of us that doesn't want to know what there is to clear. You know, it, I, don't, I don't want to go, I'm not going to tap on this issue because I believe, at, at a, and I won't even think this consciously, at an unconscious level, I'm thinking, yeah, I don't need to tap on that because part of me is thinking, yeah, because that thing is keeping me in my comfort zone. I don't want to let go of that. So by working with someone else who's not uh, invested in your comfort zone but is invested in your future, so it's like working with a personal trainer. You know, you can go to the gym and you're lifting weights and you go, one, two, uh, oh, that's good. But the trainer's going to go, come on, five more. <laughs> I know you've got it in you. And you break past that, uh, what you believe is your limit. Because what we, we go through the day thinking, well, that's as much as I can do. It's not a real limit. Well, for sure you're going to have me soon as one of your, your coaching uh, clients. And, I, and really, I welcome everybody else to go. And, and on, the, on the YouTube videos and everywhere where I'm going to place this interview, there's going to be links to your website, links to your videos, so people can really figure out uh, what we're talking about if they didn't still understand. <laughs> and um, I'm curious personally of what the Money Beyond Belief with Joe Vitale was, is, uh, how it started. And um, because also what I, what I love that you say in a few of your, of your videos and that I, I have come to 
uh, almost uh, have to fight almost in, in the minds of people is there's this there's these two beliefs that are so powerful one is if you're spiritual you're not supposed to be rich and the other one is if you're having fun you're not gonna make money out of it it's either you work hard and you make money or you're enjoying what you're doing but oh let's not sell that so and so I love it because when I saw that you had tapping on money and that you and that you repeatedly say to people it's okay you know it's part of the energy of this universe you know and I and I and I tell to people that are very spiritual I say God wouldn't have put all these stores if it wasn't for us to enjoy them <laughs> right right I mean what what kind of God says I'm going to create all this wonderful abundance but it's only for bad people <laughs> You know, exactly. my my good children, my spiritual loving children are going to forsake. I mean, abundance is abundance. Do you go to if you go to um, say the Grand Canyon or or a beach or any place where there's just spectacular scenery, which is just natural abundance? Does a spiritual person say, "Ooh, I'm just going to look at a little bit of it"? You know, I'm going to let the greedy people look at the whole panorama view. But um, but I'm spiritual, so I'm just going to look at that one rock. Oh yes, I'm satisfied looking at that one. Oh, that one little bit of ocean. Yes, that's all I need. And I and I, you know, this is not to to put anyone down who's spiritual, and and has those beliefs because it's it's you're not you're not stupid. It's I'm not I'm so I'm not saying you know you're stupid for thinking that. I'm not laughing at anyone in particular. I'm laughing at us as human beings. Because we have these we beliefs. We all do that in certain, in yeah. certain aspects of it, our life. We it's been passed on to us yes. from all kinds of training. You know, we have all kinds of, you know, oh, look at St. Francis who was born rich but gave away all of, his uh, all of his belongings and all of his money to live a poor monk's life. And uh, Mother Teresa and Gandhi just wearing rags and all this you know, so we have these images of spiritual people who have forsaken anything like that. But it's not, but abundance is abundance. And, and so being spiritual means being connected to the source of, of everything, the source of all abundance. So I, I don't believe that we are asked to, you know, we don't want to you know, saying, well, abundance is everything, and then we go and we forsake ourselves, and we're greedy, and we make choices that we know are hurtful to ourselves or others, because that's obviously not spiritual. Making money in that way is not spiritual, but, you know, just allowing abundance and being part of that connection to abundance, and it comes in, and as far as having fun, you know, plenty of very successful people will say the best way to make money is doing something you love. I, I know that I make a lot more money doing what I love than when I used to have a job doing stuff that I hated. <laughs> it's always it's always been much more profitable for me to do what I love. Definitely. And what I say to people is success is based on so many different aspects. And if the child inside of us is so angry about the job we're doing, he's going to spend all the money anyway or get us ill or do other things to us that is unsuccessful at the end of the day. So it's better to have a life that is uh, equilibrated, that's, that's successful in different ways, and one of them evidently is to do something we love and get paid well for doing it. And I know because I've done really the, the, the path of, of most resistance. I've done things that I, I was good at that I didn't necessarily love, that paid well until I, you know, I decided to let go of the universe and do what I really felt I loved and say, you know what, I, I don't even care what happens, I have to do this, and then we'll see, you know, uh, and trusting, and somewhere trusting that everything's going to come together. So, uh, so yes, so please tell me about this uh, Money Beyond Belief and what it's all about. I'm very curious. Well, I had uh, an opportunity, to, I, I exchanged a couple of emails with Joe Vitale many years ago, and and then he was doing this program called Attract a New Car and asked me to be one of the guest speakers on that. And we really hit it off and worked well together. And I said, let's do, 
another, uh, let's do a program, just the two of us. And, and he said, yeah, well, let's do it on this. And he came up with the title Money Beyond Belief. So basically it was two teleclasses we had a group of people on. And the first one was clearing, was, uh, so it was all about the beliefs about money that stop us from having it. Because while consciously most of us say, oh, I'd love to have more money. I'd love to have a new car, a big house, all of that stuff. Most of us have a lot of negative programming about money. You know, it could be the, the old line, money is the root of all evil. Rich people are greedy. Rich people are evil. There's all, all these things. So while consciously we say, oh, I'd love to have more money. I'd love to enjoy this stuff. Part of us in, the, in our mind is saying, yes, but then I'd be a bad person. And it's much more important that I be a good person than that I have money, as though it's one or the other. So we, uh, so in one call, we tapped on the issues about money, like the fear that money is the root of all evil, that money is bad, all the reasons why we couldn't or shouldn't want money and why we should block it. And then in the second call, we talked about all the reasons why we shouldn't have money. You know, it could be money's fine. Yeah, I have no problem with money. It's me that's the problem. I'm not good enough. I'm not deserving enough. I'm a bad person, so I shouldn't have any nice things. So it's all the reasons why I couldn't or shouldn't have money. So we were clearing that, that stuff. So because we, you know, at an unconscious level, we block opportunities to have money all the time. You know, I can make a sales call. Uh, no, I couldn't. <laughs> I could go meet those people. No, no, I couldn't. And we're not even aware of it. Then we're sitting there thinking, why don't I have any money? Well, because of all this unconscious stuff about why we couldn't or shouldn't have money or why money is wrong for us. So that's what the, the money beyond belief. You know, I, I love that title because and, and I've used it for a lot of other things, love beyond belief and body beyond belief, and because it, it has sort of a double meaning. One is it's beyond belief. It's, oh, so much money, just unbelievable amount of money. But it also is an explanation of the process because it's our limiting beliefs. So I have the money right now that I believe I should. So what is the money beyond those current beliefs? So that's what we're talking about. It's the money that's beyond our current level of beliefs. I love it. I love it. And it, it is true that a lot of the beliefs are stopping. And often what I, what I tell people is uh, look at what you want and just stop for a second and ask yourself, what are you going to do next? Sometimes we're so stuck on what we want that we don't even know what's going to happen. What's the step after? And so if you do, it's like the edge of a cliff. If you don't know that there's a bridge after that cliff, you're, you're never going to approach the cliff. So you're always going to be wanting, but oh, if I get there, I don't even know what I'm going to do with it after. So, uh, so I love the beyond belief, the passing through all the, the stop signs. I, I've had people, I, was, I remember talking to a woman once and I said, what do you want? She said, I want $500 million. That's my goal. And at that time, you know, she was indeed making $50,000 a year. And I'm like, see, it's not believable to you. And not only that, um, Earl Nightingale is one of the great, uh, you know, founders of personal development. He once said, most people say they want more money than they actually do and settle for much less money than they can actually have. You know, so it's like, what are you going to do with $500 million? Uh, enjoy it. <laughs> it's like, what do you, what do you really want? And, I, and I'm not saying, there's nothing wrong with having $500 million. Be a billionaire if that's, if that's who you really feel that you're meant to be. But is it who you really feel you're meant to be, or is it, you know, the media telling you that you should be? It's, it, is it a should? You know, then I'll prove myself. Then, uh, then I'll be worthy of love. And that's, that's why it's so key, what you were saying earlier about self-love. You know, I figured out years ago, gee, my, my actual job is teaching people to love themselves. <laughs> you know, when you get right down to it, because when you love yourself, yes, you want to give yourself the good things in life. You just are healthier. So, you know, you might say, well, 
yeah, if I if I did a job that I love, I might make good money, but I could get this corporate job that I would hate, but if I really worked hard, then I'd make a lot more money. It's like, would you need that extra money? And would it actually be worth it? You know, you might say technically, yeah, but doing what you love, you have the possibility to make more than enough money to live the life that you really want to live. And it's figuring out for ourselves, what is that life? And I'm not here to put the limits on anyone and say, you should want less. Not at all. Just find out for yourself, what is it that I really want? What's really going to make me happy? You know, am I going to, you know, do I, do I need a private jet? Or was that about something else? Was that about someone else? And as we go through and we get to a point of, you know, we recognize more and more, this is, this is who I am. This is what I like to have. So, uh, and then we free ourselves up and, and just treat ourselves with love. And plus, the more we love ourselves, uh, well, the more we take care of ourselves physically. So we tend to be healthier. That's why I would say, you know, people will try to bully themselves into exercise or into losing weight by hating on themselves. You know, oh, you're fat, you're ugly, you're this, you're that. No. <laughs> you want to love yourself right where you are. And the more you, and people say, but if I love myself right where I am, then I'll just settle. And no. When you love yourself right where you are, you want to take even better care of yourself. We're much more loving to ourselves, and really, it's at the heart of creating the life that we really want to live. Yes, and I totally agree with you. And uh, when people start, and I come from myself, from from learning to love myself for who I am and going through the process, and I realize that once that the true acceptance of who we are as a as a whole being is. Proving first of all anything is is useless, but then we're we're much more true to our own self. And when I try to teach that to others, I say, well, try to always look at yourself as your best friend, and what you would do and wouldn't do to your best friend to stay friends. You wouldn't insult your best friend. You would at least say hello in the morning when you see the person. You would smile. You would not criticize. You would not lie. You would not make promises you won't keep. All the things that people do to themselves, they would never, ever accept others doing that to them or do that to somebody they, they care for. And I say, if before to, to go in the process of self-love, at least act with yourself with kindness generosity of heart love as you would love someone else and slowly you will get that comfort that you are pretty much okay <laughs> you're great you're a great human being just the way you are and then I realized and I had that happen it was quite astonishing I had that happen with people I coached on totally different things I coached them about money I coached them about career and then they started losing weight they started getting in shape and I wasn't coaching them about that at all. But, no I, <laughs> yeah. but they love themselves so much. They were saying, I can't, like, when I see a, a, a dish that is greasy, I, I just, my body can't take it anymore because it's not good for me. And I love myself too much to take that in me as a poison. Some people stop drinking, like, too much alcohol. Like, I had things happen that are, you know, miracles, as you say. But those are all things because when someone loves themselves truly, then they're going to take care of themselves in every aspect of their, of their life unconsciously. Then they're going to be good enough to get all the good stuff in their life. So suddenly money comes easily. Suddenly, you know, everything is better. And what I love about that, and that's the purpose of most of these videos, is because my my let's say what drives me is to increase that level throughout the planet and every time one individual gets to that level of self-love it radiates to the others and it inspires the others to say wow that person seems pretty okay you know and maybe i am okay too or something it radiates to the kids it's you know less conflicts less fights less wars less so many things when people are just okay they don't need to show off they don't need to fight they don't need to prove the point they're just okay and everybody is just okay the way they are so yeah. so that's what i love about what you do as well 
yeah, it's clearing fear and stress out, all that stuff that motivates the the need to hurt other people. You know, and when we're anytime we want to hurt anyone else, it's because something inside of us is feeling hurt. If we're, you know, just imagine at the times that you're feeling really good about yourself in a really honest way, you're just feeling oh, I feel healthy, I feel happy. Could you possibly say something mean to someone else? You know, that's why, you know, look at kids bullying and the, the popular kids putting other kids down. It's like, okay, they're not as happy as they think as they think they are or as they're trying to convince themselves they are or as you believe they are. Because, you know, the really successful kids who, who are feeling really good about themselves are helpful to others. They're they're kind to others. They're encouraging to others. They're not putting others down. So, and it's true of all of us. When when we're taking it out on someone else, it's because something inside of us doesn't feel good. So, I mean, that's part of my thing. Is I look around. There's so many things in the world that I would love to see improved, but I can't personally do them. But I know the people out there that can do them are out there. So. If I can help enough people clear their blocks so that they're out there doing the good they can do, or at the very least just being kinder to themselves, which in turn will cause them to be kinder to others, the world's got to be a better place. Yeah, I totally agree. And I thank you for doing so. And uh, I want to uh, encourage as many people as possible to get into tapping. Um, get in touch with you if they need personal sessions and and get onto your, on your website to get more information and I know you have some products there as well that can help people and uh, and are you going to write a book or are you going to do something you know well, the big thing now is everybody's writing a book so yeah you know um, I I wrote a children's book uh pardon my my reach the wizard's wish oh nice yeah, um, so yeah, I wanted to, because so many of these issues that we have uh, started in childhood, yeah. and I thought, man, if we could teach kids how to tap so they could clear it that day, rather than having it control their lives for 20, 30, 40 years, um, and not only that, but if they clear that stuff, then they'll be sharing their gifts with the world, and they'll, you know, because every kid has the potential to be a, a Gandhi or an Edison or, you know, or something that that makes a difference, that makes a positive difference, and when that stuff gets shut down, everybody loses. So, if kids had a way of clearing that stuff to, uh, you know, to live happier, more joyful lives, it, it benefits all of us. So, I wanted to come up with a fun storybook kind of way. So, you know, it's got little illustrations all the way through it and stuff, and. Uh, you know, I talk about that um, that the stuff inside of us that uh, I talk about is yuckies. <laughs> There's little, little creatures inside. And so the wizard, uh, this wizard is tapping with his wand and, it, and the yuckies pop out and then uh, realizes, you know, everyone, he can't do it for everyone. So he needs to teach people how to tap out yuckies. And they see we don't have wands and he's going, hmm. Oh wait, that works. We have wands, and so using our fingers as wands, and uh, so I just wanted to find a fun way to teach it. You know, as, as far as a, you know, I I've contributed to some some books, and I wrote a smaller book, but there are so many books being done about EFT. I don't know that I, I'm much more of a, uh, I'm less academic and more of a performer. You know, I'd rather I'd rather perform songs than write a book about music, basically. <laughs> Well, we never know, you know, I have a dream of, uh, of having a kind of an online school that would teach kids everything that's not taught in school. And, you know, like Tai Chi, meditation, you know, the power of prayer, the power of, you know, and I wanted it at one point to be called night school, like the cool, you know, the nights are cool, you know, and uh, so that you become, you know, Oh, yeah, cool. You know, huh? nights are cool. <laughs> nights school. And nights, and nights school, not day school, you know, so that kids actually find out everything that, because I, I was a very good student of school, but a very bad student in life. 
because school never taught me, you know, about health, about nutrition, about meditation, about money, about nothing, that it really would have helped me a great deal in life. So I, I th I, I'm thinking it would be great to have, and tapping would be one of them, you know, we could have all these different aspects that kids could just go online and get information and, you know, find out how to, to not have to go through 30, 25, 50 years of wandering in life to then, you know, spend so much in self-development to be able to heal these 30, 30 years and, and do what they really are meant to do on this planet as soon as they know what it is and not, you know, go wandering, uh, trying to please everybody else's dream and, and career choices for eventually deciding at 50 that that was absolutely not what they wanted to do with their life. So maybe we'll talk about that again at an, another point, but I love your book and um, I'll put a, everything on, on everywhere where I'm going to place this video so that people can really get more information and get in touch with you. And, uh, and I'll get in touch with you. I want to go further in my success. <laughs> I have to say lately I've been, you're, you're, maybe it's the miracle tapping, but I've had a lot of miracles happen in my life. So I'm, I'm kind of riding this wave of, of surreal life, which is quite wonderful, but, uh, but I want to go further. So I'll get in touch with you and, and have some sessions because I, I want to, you know, for me, I want to get better. And I think everybody should actually, everybody should, uh, coaches or no coaches, everybody should you know, improve themselves because that's what we're here for. Yeah, just to, to allow yourself in the arts, you know, even beyond it being an obligation, I mean, there, there are certain suggestions that um, about where we're obliged to be the best we can. It's something, you know, there's a spiritual, it's like uh, someone said, you know, God gives us more gifts than we can ever use. Our gift back to God is to develop those gifts and share them as much as we possibly can in our lifetime. But it, not just as an obligation, but it just feels good. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't make all these videos just because oh, it's hard, but it's, I feel I've got to do that. I've got to do this for the world. It's like I love it. I, I love what I do. So I love having opportunities. Uh, you know, so I'm grateful for this interview because I, I love being able to share about this work and introduce people to uh, this concept of setting ourselves free to enjoy life at a, at a greater level. So, you know, when we develop ourselves more, we, we, yes, definitely share our gifts more, we make a bigger difference. We also just enjoy life that much more. So it's a total win-win situation. Definitely. And I wish for more and more people to, to have that chance and have the opportunity to enjoy life, love themselves more, share that the wonderful feeling they have when they're uh, true happiness right, that, that is unconditional and uh, get in touch with you and if I have questions I'll forward them to you hopefully we'll right. get more and more people interested and practicing tapping awesome I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart it's such a it's such a pleasure but it's also an honor because I've been following you now for I'd say over almost two years so <laughs> So it's it's like uh, it's it's really endearing to have you uh, talk with me uh, directly. Thank you. That's very gratifying. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll keep in touch definitely. All right. Thank I you. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Bye.